the Radio Theater brings you Gene Tierney, Walter Brennan, and Edmund O'Brien in The Amazing Mrs. Holiday. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. We bring you tonight a very different sort of holiday. It's the amazing Mrs. Holiday, whose problems are as remarkable as the manner in which she solves them in Universal's highly entertaining screen hit of the same name. As the lady in question, we star a lovely candidate, Miss Jean Tierney, and co-starred with her are Walter Brennan and Edmund O'Brien. As for the children about whom so much of our action whirls, they're represented on our stage by a group of talented youngsters such as we in Hollywood are very proud of. Here's the first act of our play, The Amazing Mrs. Holiday, starring Jean Tierney as Ruth, Walter Brennan as Timothy, and Edmund O'Brien as Tom. The year is 1944. Ending a perilous voyage from the Orient, a crowded steamship has wearily come to rest in San Francisco Harbor. Clustered together in a corner of the pier, a group of solemn-faced little children stare gravely ahead, where a young woman talks in low tones to an immigration official. Now, Miss, about these children of yours. Now, well, let's see. Eight of them, aren't there? Yes, sir. Are you related? Ah, uh, just look at the little dears. Tell me now, did you ever see such well-behaved shavers in your life? Mr. Blake, if you don't mind. I wasn't saying a word, sir. Not a word. Well, don't. Not a word. Now then, miss. No, I'm not really related. How about their passports? Oh, they have no formal passports. Well, what kind have they? Oh, the same kind all children have during a war. Fear, need for shelter, someone to... Where did you get them? In China. But only one is Chinese, the baby. It's hard to know what happens to children in a war unless you've lived where war is being fought. Then you'll do anything in the world for them. I have the ship's report on you. Now, let's see. Sole survivors of the steamship Tulare, torpedoed and sunk by any MA action. Picked up by a convoy and transferred to steamship Westonia. Well, you've had quite an adventure. Yes, sir. Well, since you and Mr. Blake here are American citizens, you may leave the dock any time you wish. What about my children? I'm sorry. We'll have to detain them. Oh, no. Unless please, some I... reputable citizen posts a bond of $500 for each child. Cash? Cash. And guarantees they will not become public charges. Oh, well, they won't be that. I'll go to work for them. I'm used to hard work. The regulation I... states that reputable citizen must be someone already established in this country. Posting that cash is really the only way, miss. You'll need $4,000. And all the money I had in the wide world is at the bottom of the ocean in the other pair of breeches. Mr. Batson, you've, uh, you've heard of Commodore Holiday? Oh, yes, miss. It was quite a blow to learn that he went down with the Tulare. For 31 years, I served under the Commodore. Before he died, he promised to take care of the children, to adopt them. He did indeed, I'll swear to it. Timothy, has the Commodore any family? No, that's Oh, no, idea. I wouldn't do that. It, that, that is a... Oh, I'm sure they'll help us. Mr. Batson, will you take care of the children until we get back? We'll take very good care of them. Thanks. Children. Oh, yes. What what is it? Children, now listen carefully. Timothy is coming with me, but we'll come back to you very, very soon. How very soon? In just a few hours, dear. Now be good and do whatever you're told. We'll We'll be be very good. I'll hurry, Mr. Batson. Timothy, do you know where the Commodore lives? Of course I know, but I... Then hurry. Goodbye, children. Goodbye. Goodbye, Ruth. Goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, Timothy. Uh, yes, yes. The family will see you. Follow me. Timothy, it's such a big house. Now you just leave everything to me and don't open your mouth. Oh, no. No, I won't. Uh, but what will I tell him? Why, the truth, of course. Oh, oh yes, yes, of course. Uh, uh, Timothy, is that you? Uh, yes, sir. Timothy. Well, you seem to be spared my brother's fate, at least. Well, I, uh... Were you with him when the Tulare was sunk? Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, they couldn't drown you, eh, Timothy? Timothy was born to be hanged. Yes, ma'am. Uh, come in here. <laughs> Did you wish to see me? I- in a way, yes, sir. As the Commodore's lawyer, you... Well, you just make out a complete report and bring it to the office in the morning. You see, we were just discussing the disposal of this house. 
So if you'll excuse us. Uh, yes, well, uh, uh, goodbye. Uh, maybe Timothy could use a little money. Oh, yes. Yes, he could. Timothy, who is this girl? She must be the one who was on the Tuleri. Oh, well, we're glad you were saved, young woman. Uh, Ferguson, give Timothy $20. Oh, we need a lot more than that. We need 4000 What? We'd like to give you $4,000. We'd like to give everybody $4,000, but my dear... Uh, it's for the children. Timothy, tell them. I'm sorry, but we're really quite busy and you'll have to leave. Now, wait a minute. The Commodore promised to take care of them, to adopt them. Adopt who? The children. There were nine of them then. Oh, perhaps that's what the cablegram meant. Edgar. Hmm? Uh, yes, dear. He said there was lots of room in this house. And I'm sorry, my dear, but we're disposing of this house. After all, there's a war on, you know. And tax. Yes, yes and I, I know there's a war on. Come on, Timothy. Wait a minute. I served your brother a sure enough lord for 31 years. And for 31 years, I saw you vultures divil him from this and that. But I never thought I'd see the day when his own flesh and blood would, would turn out his widow and her helpless children. Widow? Yes. You heard me, his widow. Do you mean to tell me this girl, his widow? Timothy, I... Uh... They were married on the Tulare by Captain Anderson. Uh, uh, Thomas sent us that cablegram. I, I knew it meant something. Timothy, are you sure of this? Sure, I was their best man. Why didn't you tell us this before? I, uh, I didn't mean to tell it at all. Swore me to secrecy, she did. Well, what does all this mean to us? It means that an affidavit of that marriage signed by your old friend Timothy... I'd sign a hundred of them. ...will make this girl the legal widow of the Commodore. That she is, that she is. Who witnessed the marriage? Henry Johnson, the first mate, and Peter Tracy, the engineer. Was all this entered in the logbook, Timothy? Every word of it. Where is the logbook? Where the witnesses are, ma'am, at the bottom of the ocean. Well, here's that cablegram he sent. See? Surprise, it says. Arriving soon. That's all he said? That's all he had to say. Uh, I can read between the lines, you know. Yes. Well, now, uh, would you rather I go and stop by all the newspaper offices downtown? Oh, no. no. Or would you be treating the widow of the late Commodore Holiday in a manner befitting her station? I'll have Henderson to prepare a room for her. Just a minute, please. The children. I have to get the children. Come along, Timothy. Uh, oh, uh, the $4,000, Ferguson, if you please. Of course. I'll make out a check immediately. And as for anything else to make the Commodore's widow comfortable, and the little ones, I'm sure I can leave that to your own imagination. Oh, Henderson! Did you call? Yes. Send the station wagon around. I beg your pardon. You heard him, didn't you? And Mrs. Holliday is picking up her children. Goodbye, my dear people. <laughs> Well, Commodore, what do you think of us now? Look at you, hanging on the wall in the great big gold frame, the spitting image of your late departed self. You see this? A bottle of your best Irish whiskey. To your very good health, Commodore. Not bad. Not bad at all. How do you like me new outfit, Commodore? One of your suits, this is. Fits me like my own skin. <laughs> yes, sir. It's been a fortunate turn of events. I might say very fortunate. I think I'll just Timothy? go... Timothy? Who are you talking to? Oh, me and the Commodore's portrait up there was having a bright exchange of conversation. Only for a change, I was doing the talking. I was... Well, look at you. What's the matter? Ruth. I never saw such a beautiful sight in all my life. Be quiet or you'll wake the children. Just these new clothes. Timothy, which one is Karen? Uh, uh, Edgar's wife. Well, Karen bought them for me. Like an angel you are. An angel that's been on a bit of a toot. A bit of a what? You've got the staggers. Say, you haven't been drinking spirits. Oh, it's these shoes. I don't know how to walk in these shoes. They have high heels. Oh, <laughs> you had me worried. Speaking of spirits, hand that over, Timothy. That bottle. Uh, yes, ma'am. What if the children saw you? Oh, they're in bed, aren't they? But they're not asleep yet. Uh, well, then I'll take it downstairs to, uh, to, to Henderson. I'll take it to Henderson. Say good night to the children. Ah, uh, the little nippers. They're happy here, aren't they? They're overwhelmed, like I am. I hope they'll be happy. Your dear in-laws, young lady, know on what side their bread is buttered. The children have a home. That's all I'm worried about. As soon as I've had time to think, I'll find some way of getting out of here and then... Getting out of here? Have you lost your wits? Timothy, it isn't honest, and you know it. And where would you be going with eight children? I don't know, but I'll figure out something. Well, just don't be in too much of a hurry. I've never enjoyed myself so much in all my life. Well, 
I'll go see the kid. Wait for me. I'll be right back. Is that you, Henderson? Hello. Oh, good evening. I'm in the right house, I hope. At least my key fits the door. Well, this is the Holiday House. Ah, that's what I thought. Look out, now, look out. Take it easy on those stairs. It's these heels. I'm, I'm not used to them. Do you mind if I borrow that bottle and glass? I think I need a drink, too. I haven't been drinking. Oh, of course you haven't. It's, it's just, just these, these heels. heels. Would you mind uh, telling me who you are? Oh, now you tell me who you are. I'm Mrs. Holiday. Which Mrs. Holiday? Mrs. Thomas Holiday. Mrs. Thomas Spencer Holiday? Mm-hmm, yes. Well, pour me one, quick. Now, just a minute. I... But I need it. I'm Thomas Spencer Holiday, and it's quite a shock to see a gorgeous young woman stagger down the stairs and announce that she's your wife. I'm not your wife. I'm the widow of Commodore Holiday. You're the widow? Oh. <laughs> well, then you're certainly not my wife. You're my grandmother. Yes. Now, suppose we settle down and you tell me exactly what your racket is. My, uh... What is? Come on, spill it. When does the payoff come? I still don't understand you. How did you get to be my grandmother? Oh, uh, well, I, uh, I was in China, and so... Uh... And uh, so was my grandfather. Yes. I was on board his ship with the children. Oh. Oh, there are children, too. Eight children. Eight children. Yes. We lost one, little Pepe. Poor little Pepe. But there are still eight left. Four girls and four boys. One is a little Chinese baby. A what? <laughs> and my grandfather knew about all of them? Oh, yes. It was all his idea. He, he said he had a big house and there was no reason why... Well, why don't you stop? My family's been in the shipping business for generations. Every time there's a disaster, somebody like you turns up and tries to work a racket. Yours is new only because the numbers are bigger. I still don't believe any part of your story, see? Children and all. Ruthie, we want to say goodnight to Ruthie. Yes, we want oh, to no, say no. Goodnight. I thought I put you all of you to bed once. Eight of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. There are eight. Now go back. Good night, darling. Sleep well. Good night, Ruthie. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Huh? Uh, good night. I think I'd better tuck them in. Good night, Mr. Holiday. Uh, good night. No, no. No, wait, wait. I've seen them, I've heard them, and I've counted them. But I still don't get it. Now, where did you and the Commodore get the little group together? Uh, really, I, I have to go up to the children. Everybody's coming here for dinner I'll and... give you ten minutes. I'll be waiting right here. I want the whole story before dinner. Very well. I'll tell you. Henderson? I beg your... Why, Mr. Tom. Hello, Henderson. Oh, so glad to see you back, sir, safe and sound. Well, I'm glad to be back. Oh, too bad about the Commodore, wasn't it, sir? Yes, it was. An amazing man, wasn't he? Y you mean, uh... Yes. No. Well, perhaps we just didn't understand him as well as we thought we did. Well, I'll help you get my bags. They're outside. Oh, yes, sir. You, uh, you're planning to stay here? Well, this is my home, isn't it? Oh, indeed, sir, but... Uh... Now, look, you don't think I believe that story about the Commodore marrying her, do you? I don't know, sir, I'm sure. Henderson, it looks as if I got home just in time. Well, I, I see you're waiting for me. Of course I am. Get them all tucked in? Yes, thank you. And uh, you suddenly learned to walk in high heels, eh? Oh, uh... What's the matter? I, uh, I took them off, my shoes. Well, slip them on again. I, uh, do very well where it's flat, but I have a little trouble with the steps. Mm. You're going to have a little trouble with me, too. Oh, is, uh, is anything wrong? Oh, no, no, not a thing in the world. Whose children are they? Well, in, in a sense, they're everybody's. Or at least that's the way you feel about it when a war sends them to you. These were refugees. It's hard for me to explain what I mean exactly. I know what you mean, I think. My ship's just come from England. I've seen a lot of those kids. Mine came to our school sort of mission my father started many years ago. Where? Not far from Burma. I lived there almost all my life. A few months ago, the bombers came. Before my father died, he told me to get the children to Calcutta. He had a friend there. He told me to keep them together as one family. You see, by the time we left, none of them had anyone. Only each other and me. I see. But, uh, 
This house isn't Calcutta, is it? No, it isn't. Before you came, we were planning to get rid of it. Yes. Well, I'll be leaving soon, two or three weeks, as soon as our new ships get off the ways. You see, Grandpa had quite a big shipping business, or didn't you know? I knew. Uh, that's what I thought. Well, after I go, anything you want to change around, just suit yourself. Thank you. <laughs> you know, it's going to be kind of funny calling you grandmother. I could call you Mrs. Holiday, except people would think we're not friends. Henderson told me your name is Ruth. I think I'll call you Ruth. While it may seem a little undignified, I think you'd better call me Tom. If you like. I was very fond of the Commodore. We never showed much affection for each other, but down deep... Oh, well... I, I guess he died the way he wanted to, at sea, on his own ship. He, um, he must have been very happy that last voyage. I, uh, I don't know. I saw very little of him. Oh? Why, that sounds like the baby. The baby? Has he got a cold? He sounds hoarse. I, uh... I'd better go up and see what's wrong. Every time we start to talk about something interesting, those kids of yours manage to break it up. Uh, excuse me. Sure. I'll see you at dinner. <laughs> what in the world? Yeah, that hurt your throat. I'm a doing. Terrible. Yeah. I, I see you're getting into deep water, so I thought I'd better throw you a line. Timothy, we should never have told that lie. Why not? It worked better than the truth, didn't it? Why didn't you tell me about the Commodore's grandson? How did I know he was coming home? Oh, they're here. The family's here for dinner. Timothy, what am I going to do? Do? Well, you're going to eat. No, no, I can't. Yes, you can. Come on now. All right. It will be as good a time as any to get it over with. Get what over with? The truth, Timothy. I'll tell them the truth at dinner. <laughs> In a moment, we'll bring you the second act of The Amazing Mrs. Holiday, starring Jean Tierney, Walter Brennan, and Edmund O'Brien. Here's Mr. Keeley at the microphone. Act two of The Amazing Mrs. Holiday, starring Jean Tierney as Ruth, Walter Brennan as Timothy, and Edmund O'Brien as Tom. <laughs> It's about an hour later, and seated in the vast hall called the dining room, the holiday clan is gathered at the dinner table. The meal has been long and silent. But now as coffee's being served, Mrs. Edgar Holiday looks at Ruth and breaks the embarrassed quiet. My dear, you've done nothing for ten minutes but stare at us. I, uh, I'm sorry. But there's something I Is must tell Is there any more coffee oh, around here? What do I have to do to get a decent-sized cup of coffee? Simply ask, Timothy, in a normal tone. Lucy. Yes, ma'am. Tell me about the Commodore, Ruth. How had his health been? Did he still smoke cigars, chain fashion? Cigars? The oh, Commodore I, uh... never smoked in his life, and you know it. I'm surprised he'd ever mentioned you in his letters. Well, I... I don't think the Commodore ever mentioned his family, did he, Mrs. Holliday? No. No, he didn't. But I'm sure he mentioned he was fabulously wealthy and that you, as his widow, would I think caught... I'd better explain that, Aunt Louise. Under the terms of the trust, the Commodore's widow has certain fixed rights in the company as well as certain properties and interests. Oh, but I don't want any rights or money. I, I just want the children to be safe. <clears throat> I, I beg your pardon. Yes, Henderson? Some persons from the press are here. They want to see Mrs. Holliday. Tell them we'll be right out. Now, all of you. Try to hide your personal feelings and act like one big happy family. Oh, must I see them? The port is not. Well, I... I'm afraid so. But don't worry. We'll see them with you. Now then, Mr. Holliday, how long did you know the Commodore before you married him? Why, I hardly knew him at all. Ah, love at first sight. Oh, no. He just wanted to help the children. It must have been quite a surprise to the family. Oh, not at all. The Commodore radioed the day of the wedding, told us all about this lovely girl. Look this way, please, Mrs. Holliday. What? Thank you. Now, how about one smiling? Oh, please. Go on, please. give him a smile. Fine. Now, one more. This time, sad, huh? You're thinking about the Commodore. Can we have a picture of the children, Mrs. Holliday? Well, they're all asleep now. Uh, maybe some other time. Look, I, I don't mean to be rude, but you'll, you'll just have to excuse me. I, you'll just have to excuse me. Well, that's all. Well, that's all. Oh, 
please, children. No questions now. Just try to be very quiet going down the stairs. Are we all here? Yes, they're all here, and you're a raving lunatic. I simply have to get out of this house. All right. You heard what she said, children. Would someone mind telling me what this is all about? Uh, oh, uh, <laughs> good morning, Tom. Good morning. Uh, well, uh, uh, you see, uh, 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 we decided that, uh, that the place is just too big for us. Where are you going? We're going away. Oh, I wish you wouldn't. Ruth says we have to go. At four o'clock in the morning? Timothy, take the children back to bed. I'm sorry, but we're leaving. Not now, please. I want to talk to you first. Hey, come on, kids. Back your room. Huh? Ruth! Oh, oh, very well. Here, take the baby, Elizabeth. And quiet. He's still sleeping. I'll be careful, Ruth. I know how you feel, and I want to apologize. Let's go downstairs. You don't have to apologize. Oh, well, my relatives have bad manners. <laughs> You see, they've been waiting around for Grandpa's money for years. I don't think you understand. Sure I do. You're not interested in the money. You're in the middle of the war with a lot of children. He asked you to marry him, and you did. No, that isn't right. Well, however it happened, it's none of our business. But it didn't happen. I didn't marry the Commodore. That was a lie. What? The part about the children is the truth. He did say he'd help, even if he had to adopt them. But you didn't marry him? Well, what about the cable, Grand? He spoke of a surprise, or did you send that? Uh, no, I... I'll tell you. I... I first met your grandfather in the cable office. The children and I had been waiting for days, trying to get on a boat. Get this cable off right away, clerk. Yes, sir. Surprise sailing. We'd have to take out the sailing, Commodore. Sorry. Arriving San Francisco soon. We'd have to take out the San Francisco, too, I'm afraid. But the rest can go all right. There isn't any rest. Sorry, sir. Censorship. All right. Just get it off. Yes, sir. Uh, pardon me. Who was that gentleman? Commodore Holliday, miss. You mean that's his ship out there? Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Elizabeth. Yes, Ruth? Round up the children quick. And follow me. I'm going to the pier. Someone's calling you, Commodore. I've got ears. What is it? Commodore Holiday. Yes, sir. Is your ship going to Calcutta? It is. Oh, I'm so glad. You are? You see the children back there. We, uh, we just came down the Burma Road. There's no other way for us to leave her unless we go on your ship. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, but I have to get the children to Calcutta. We're not allowed to carry passengers. Oh, oh I think it'd be kind of nice to have a couple of them aboard, sir. Just one or two kids. There are only nine of them, sir. Nine? Nine children? They're very small children. Oh, I'm sorry, young lady. Get aboard, Timothy. Hey, hey, sir. After you, sir. Stick around. Isn't there something I can do? Shh. If the Commodore says it's orders, it's orders. Wait for me right here. Timothy! Coming, sir. Coming. It was Timothy who got us aboard the Tulare. And between his cabin and the storeroom, we managed to make ourselves very comfortable. Then one day, while I was feeding the children, the door suddenly opened. How did you get aboard my ship? <laughs> it's all right, children. There's nothing to be frightened about. Answer my question. I'll be glad to answer your question. On deck. Oh, uh, well, maybe you're right. Come on out on deck. Really a very disagreeable old man. Do you have to roar like that in front of those poor children? I wasn't roaring at the children. And there's no need to roar at me. How did you get we on? We sneaked on. Because we must get to Calcutta. We're not going to Calcutta. But you said we were. You told me. These are war times. I can't reveal my destination. Have you got any papers? I have, but, but not the children. They're all war orphans. Any relatives in the United States? No, I... We're going to the United States? We are. And when we land, the children will be placed with the proper authorities. Oh, but they can't be separated. They've gone through so much together. I gave my word that we'll I... We'll worry about that in San Francisco. But I don't know anyone in San Francisco. You know him, don't you? So you're responsible for the this. The Commodore here owns half of San Francisco. Shut up. Yes, sir. Oh, please. Promise me that the children will be allowed to stay together and that I'll be allowed to stay with them. You see, oh, I... Oh, stop that prattle. Now listen to me. Those confounded children are on my ship. And I'll get them into the country if I have to adopt every last one of them and swear I've known them all my life. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Commodore. Now get back to them before I throw the whole lot of you in irons. Commodore, you're a wonderful man. I'm wonderful. A good mind to wring your neck. Yes. And stop wearing my socks. Mm. 
You don't know what it meant to us. Getting into the United States was like getting into heaven. But that night it happened. A submarine found it. Timothy and I got the children into a lifeboat. It wasn't until we were some distance from the ship that we found... We found that little Pepe had been lost behind. The ship was a mass of flames, and as we stood there looking at it helplessly... Pepe! Pepe! He's dead, Luckness. But he has the Commodore to look after him now. I'll miss the Commodore. And I think wherever he goes, he'll miss me a bit, too. Pepe! We were the only survivors. We were picked up by the Westonia two days later. You know the rest. We came here for help, and then we made up that lie. You sure told a good one. It was a terrible mistake. I'll, I'll do anything you want me to do, only please let us go. You can't go. You're barreled in. We're all in a spot. Why? I don't understand. You will tomorrow. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Why, yes, Senator, yes. Yes, that's very kind of you, Senator. Where are they? What? what have you done with them? Yes, the sea was his life. Me, but you can't hurt them. Yes, it is a little strange, a 21-year-old grandmother. Oh, oh, please, they suffered enough. I'll tell the family you called. Oh, Goodbye, please. Senator. Please. What in the world are you talking about? The children, they've gone. They're not gone. And how do you expect me to talk long distance when you're... Not gone? No, if you had sense enough to look out that window, you'd see... What? Oh, Oh, thank goodness. I told them about Victory Gardens, and they wanted to stop, and Timothy's helping them. Oh, I'm... I won't be sorry. You're sorry? <laughs> I've been answering this telephone since 7.30. Telegrams, reporters, radio stations. It was on the radio. Did you know that? What was on the radio? You. All about you and the children. Something else. I talked to the immigration department. Immigration? They're putting through permits for the children to stay. Oh, thanks. I'll keep them here. I'll see that they're well cared for as long as the Commodore promised you that. But you'll have to go. Leave them? Oh, but I... Of course. I'll go. I'll leave today. You can't leave today. I will leave today. You can't until the Immigration Department sends the permits. Oh. And while you're here, try to act as Mrs. Holliday would. Is that what you meant last night about getting barreled in? You mean you're ashamed of it? I mean this, this newspaper. You're in the headlines. What if I am? What's that got to do with my leaving? If you disappear now, there'd be a scandal. Do you want to make a laughing stock out of my grandfather? I just don't want to be Mrs. Holliday. Well, you should have thought of that sooner. When you do leave, you'll make up some excuse about going to see relatives. I haven't any relatives. Well, invent some. The way you invented a husband. Where did your family come from? Philadelphia. I'll arrange transportation for you to go there the day the children's permits arrive. I'll, uh, I'll do anything you say. Oh, um, I, I thought I might take the kids to the airport this afternoon. Oh, they're scared to death of planes. I know, but I thought if they saw them firsthand, it might help them to get over it. It might be a very good idea. What time do you want us to be ready? Oh, don't bother coming. I'll handle them all right. They'll be back in plenty of time for dinner. Thank you. Oh, uh, yes, yes. I uh, haven't had a chance to talk with you since I brought the kids back from the airport. They enjoyed it very much. Thank you. Well, I've been wondering, uh, since the children are likely to remain here indefinitely, uh, is their health good? Well, it must be after what they've survived. However, I think they could all stand a checkup and... Uh, oh, their teeth. Oh, yes. Yes, I'll make a note. Let's see. Doctor and dentist. Now, uh, how about psychologically? Any neuroses? You know, mental stuff? Oh, no. They're very normal children. Uh-uh. Nobody's normal. At least that's, that's what this book says. It also says that children must have a feeling of security. They like you. They'll feel secure with you. Well, they... They may miss you. For a while, maybe. You've, uh, heard something about the permit? Oh, no, no. But as soon as they arrive... I'll, uh, leave. I didn't say that. I was about to say Pardon that... Pardon me, Mrs. Holliday. That's you. Oh, uh, oh yes. Uh, Lucy? The children want you to come up and put them to bed. They say they won't go to sleep unless you do. I kind of think they mean it. Uh, excuse me. Sure. 
Why don't you come up? Sorry, I have a date. It's just to say goodnight. Oh. Well, I guess I've got time for that. Something I should know about anyway. It won't take long. I prayed for everybody. Me too, for both of you. Good boy. Come on now. Put your hands in. Good night. I want to say good night to him. Oh. <laughs> well, good night, uh... Teddy. Good night, Teddy. Hey, no kissing stuff. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Fellas shake hands. Oh, sure, sure they do. Like this. Ruth, the baby's asleep already. Yes, and we mustn't wake him. Hey... He's cute, huh? Very. See him like this, you'd never think he cries so much. That's only because he misses his mother. He's a very nice little boy. We, uh, we ought to find a name for him, hadn't we? Oh, we do have a name for him. You have? We call him Tom. Huh? We call him Tom. Like you. Oh. Now go to sleep, everyone. No more noise. Go to sleep. Ah, oh, that wasn't so hard. You're not finished yet. The girls. Oh. Oh, the girls. Same thing? Just about. You'll be better at it this time. You've had some practice. Then after lunch, he says that uh, he's taken them to the shipyards. You know, Root, I believe he's crazy for those kids. I, uh, I'm glad they're gone. There's something wrong, Root? Timothy, will you please get me a railroad ticket right away? What for? I'm going to Philadelphia. Maybe I can find somebody there who knew my mother and father. Well, you're not going away today. I have to leave before the children get back. Please. You're running away. You're falling for that guy. You think you're fooling me, do you? Well, if ever I saw a girl falling in love head over heels, step by step, you... Timothy! The letter from the immigration department. It came today. Oh. Well, what are you going to tell the children? Nothing. I, I just want to be gone by the time they get back. Well, maybe... Maybe you're right. Get me the ticket, Timothy. I'll try. I'll try. All right, all right. Who's next, please? Uh, uh, here, mister. Take my place. I'm in no hurry. Oh, thanks a lot. Ticket to Philadelphia, she says. She can't go. She can't. This window, please. I'll take care of some of you people over here. Yes, sir? Yes, sir? Uh, uh, who, me? What can I do for you? Well, you know there's a war on. Yes, I've heard something about it. And so there's no chance of getting a ticket to Philadelphia. Now, is there? I've got to have a drawing room. Everything going east is sold out. Oh, dear me, dear me. What a pity. This party was set on leaving today. I suppose there's... Nothing can be done, huh? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, thank you. Just the same and very good day to you. Am I nuts or what? Well, you tried Timothy and me by... She won't believe me, though. I tried to get a ticket. What more can I do? You just can't get a train tonight to Philadelphia. Well, that's all right. I'm just going to Los Angeles. Nuts. She's mad. She's quite mad. Hey, mister, are uh, you in luck? Uh, what's that? Uh, what's that? Just got a cancellation. Fix your right up. Let's hurry before somebody else grabs it. Come on. Uh... Hello. Hello, Tom. Is that you? Yes. I've been trying to get you for hours. It's me, Timothy. Yes, what's the matter? Plenty's the matter. But I can't talk now. She's coming. What? Don't ask him any questions. Just meet me under the clock on the railroad station in half an hour. And don't forget. Well, Goodbye. In a moment, we'll bring you the third act of The Amazing Mrs. Holiday, starring Jean Tierney, Walter Brennan, and Edmund O'Brien. Here's your producer, Mr. William Keeley. 
Presenting Act Three of The Amazing Mrs. Holiday, starring Jean Tierney as Ruth, Walter Brennan as Timothy, and Edmund O'Brien as Tom. <laughs> In the last 30 minutes, Tom Holliday has been a very busy man. He's rushed the children home from their visit to the shipyards and dashed to the railroad station in response to Timothy's mysterious phone call. Under the clock, Timothy's waiting for him, his face lit up with a strange and somewhat suspicious glow. I thought you'd never get here, Tom. Well, what's this all about? Are you drunk? You're never more sober in me life. Well, all right. What's the matter? It's Ruth. She's leaving. What? Leaving? That's why I phoned you. She's in the waiting room. Look here. See? Look over there. Ruth. She's waiting for the train to Philadelphia. For what happened? Well, uh, uh, say, you see that fella sitting next to her there? Uh, 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 that's her fiancé. She's going with her fiancé. The guy she's going to marry. Marry? Ah, <laughs> uh, look at him. Met him in China, she did. He saw a picture in the paper, and, and, and she was so glad to hear from him, she decided to get married. He's one of them flying tigers. Flying tiger? He's not even in uniform. Uh, well, uh, uh, I think he's out of uniform now. He's trying to get into the intelligence. He's an intelligent fella. Well, are you sure she's going to marry him? Sure she is. And she'll be out of your sight forever. Of course, that doesn't worry you any. Oh, no. What? No. Why should it? I, uh... Well, I, I guess I ought to go over there and wish them good luck. Hey, do that, me boy. Hurry up. You've not much time. I beg your pardon. Do you have the time, please? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's just uh, 20 minutes to five. Uh, thank you. Well, uh, I, I hear you're leaving us. Oh, I... Uh, oh, yes. Hello. Huh? I, I said hello. Oh, Hello. I'm sorry you had to leave so suddenly. I thought it would be better if I left today. Yes. Oh, uh, my name is Holiday, uh, Tom Holiday. Huh? Oh, uh, my name is Jeff Adams. I'm glad to know you. I'm glad to know you. Well, she's a great girl. She is? Well, she certainly seems to be very nice. Well, I, I hope you'll be very happy. I'll be perfectly all right, thank you. Adams, you're a lucky fellow. Me? Oh, you bet your life I am. Tom, there's, uh, there's something you ought to know about Rodney. He was ill on the boat. Just be careful about what he eats. Oh, sure, sure. You know, Jeff, she, <laughs> she's always worrying about those children. She, she's great with kids. Oh, I'm crazy about kids myself. Oh, uh, will you excuse me? I, I'd like to tell her something, and it, it's sort of private. Oh, sure, sure. Go right ahead. Here, take my seat. Oh, no. Go on, go on, sit down. No, 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 really, that's all right. Uh, Ruth, I'll just tell the children that you had to leave suddenly. Later on, I'll, I'll tell them the rest. Oh, please try to explain it so that they'll understand. Oh, I will, I will. Uh, uh, what time does your train leave, Jeff? Oh, a few minutes now. You don't mind if I walk down to the platform with you? Oh, no. You don't mind, Jeff, do you? Oh, no. You know, Jeff, I'd like to buy a little present for you. You would? Oh, but why should you do want to do that for me? Well, I, I'd just like to. Say, this, this friend of yours is really a swell egg. You just take good care of her, Jeff. Oh, I'll be glad to. You don't have to worry about a thing. Anybody travels with Jeff Adams travels all right. And any time you want the children to visit you, or if you want to visit the children, why, come right along. Oh, sure. What children? Her children. Well, you don't think she'd forget them after you get married. Married? Hey, what kind of a racket is this? Are you trying to stay there and tell me I'm going to marry her? I'm not going to marry anybody. Oh, yes, you oh, are. Oh, no, I'm not. I've heard about people like you before. I want a witness. Hey, mister, mister. Yeah, yeah, what's the trouble? Mister, you're trying to tell me I'm going to marry this girl. Oh, no, please, it's been a mistake. I Don't think you pull that around. innocent stuff on me. I've been around, sister. I want a policeman. I want a policeman. Well, you've come to the right man. Leave everything to me. Now listen to me, the pair of you. Get out of here. I'll handle him. You'd better. But I don't... Come on, that... no back talk now. Get the pair of you. Get! Well, here they go, mister. I got rid of them for you. Hey, you, you, you know him, huh? Never saw him before in all my life. I ought to follow him as a public-spirited citizen. Now listen here, citizen. The train for Philadelphia leaves in just one minute. One minute? Oh, gee, whiz, gee, I'll... 57 I'll... seconds now. 
56. Don't. 55. Go on, Don't run. worry. Don't worry. I'll make it. I'll make it. Oh, boy. 52 Philly. seconds. Philadelphia? Hey, wait a minute. I'm going to Fresno. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Is that you, Tom? Timothy? Uh, yes. Where are you? Oh, I'm still in the station. I figured I'd better stay here till I found out if it... you'd let me come in the house again. Well, you realize what you did to me? Uh, yes, sir. Well, at least we stopped Ruth from leaving. Come on home. Uh, yes, sir. Oh, uh, on your way back, get some stamps. Stamps? Yeah, about 200. We'll be sending out some invitations. <laughs> Congratulations. What for? Y getting married, are you and Ruth? Oh, of course not. We've decided to give a reception. A reception? Yes, for charity. Oh. So get those stamps and come on home. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, thanks anyway for the idea. A lovely reception, Louise. Simply lovely. Thank you, my dear. Great crowd, Edgar. Ought to raise a lot of money tonight. Great. A disgrace to the name of Holiday. What's a disgrace? I saw them just now out on the terrace. Tom and that girl kissing. I knew it. I knew it all the time. And what are you going to do about it? I don't know, but I'm going to do something. Well, there's one way of breaking it up, at least for the time being. Edgar, stop the ceremony. Now, my dear? Now. Henderson? Yes, madam. Tell Mr. Tom he's wanted in here. If he can break away. Yes, madam. Good evening, sir. If I may have your hat, sir. The reception's right in the... Ooh. Now, don't Ooh. faint, Lucy. Ooh. Don't faint. C -c -c Commodore. But I thought... We thought... I don't look dead, do I? What's going on here? A reception, sir. In your memory. In my memory? Well, that's something I'd want to... I've got to see. I don't want to miss that, do I, Pepe? Pepe? Say hello to Lucy, Pepe. Hello. She thinks we're ghosts. No, Lucy, we never felt better in our lives. Now, take care of Pepe. I'm going inside. But, Commodore... Oh, I wouldn't miss this for the world. Oh, uh, my widow. I understand I've got a widow. Where is she? she she's in there, too, sir. Well, oh, cheer dear. up, Lucy. I'm home again. In memory of the late departed Commodore... I wish he were here tonight to speak for himself. Speak for myself, eh? I wish he had been among us to hear the wonderful speech just made by his beautiful wife. To see so many of his old friends gathered here to aid this deserving cause. And I'm sure if he were here, he'd say, Edgar, Edgar sit, sit down. down. You, you talk, talk too much. much. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure that as he looks upon us from that faraway place, he gives his blessing to what we are doing tonight in his memory. Every gift that you good people donate tonight, we, the Holiday family, will match dollar for dollar. So step right up with your signed pledge. All right, now who'll be the first one? $500, Ollie. Quickly, Tom. Quickly, Tom. You know what I'm going to do, Timothy. I'm going to give $10 just for the pleasure of seeing them lay $10 of the old buzzard's money. Well, uh, Henderson, you know, I don't think the Commodore would like all this. Like it? <laughs> he was the stingiest man in San Francisco. He was, eh? Certainly was. I suppose the old boy was a pretty good sailor, though, eh? Good sailor? Ha! <laughs> Why, every voyage we made, he was so seasick the first two days, I had to walk the ship for him. Really? And did you know this? He loved to knit. No. Oh, yes. Made all his own socks himself. Uh, made these himself, did he? Let me see. Oh, yes, that's his favorite pair you've got on. Oh, I could tell you things that would make your hair curl. But, of course, we can only speak kindly of the dead. You must have known the old man very well. Well, I should have. I served him 31 years. Yes? Yeah. He died in the arms, he did. He did? He did that. There we were on the bridge, and he... Oh, Commodore! Take care of him, Big Mouth. I've got other things to do. Oh! Oh! Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yes, it's me, all right. But you, you're, 
You're dead. No, sir, I ain't dead. Hello, Edgar. Oh, it's a Tom. And Louise. What are you crying for? Disappointed? Hello, Tommy. Grandpa. Well, boy, you certainly fooled us. How do you feel? Never better. But I've got something to say to these people. Now, uh, where's that girl? Where's that girl that says she's my widow? I'm uh, here, Commodore. Oh, yes, sir. All right, everybody. This girl here was on my ship, weren't you? Yes, I was. Came aboard with nine children, didn't you? I didn't want her on my ship. No, nor the kids either. But I... She uh... told me her story, and I believed her. I believed she was a fine, honest girl. And all those days at sea after the disaster, I never changed my opinion. I thought she was lost, and I felt sorry for her. And when I heard she was saved, that you all accepted her as my widow, I was very surprised. And as I look at her now, I can only say that I don't believe there's a person in this house that knows, that knows how happy I am that fate has spared my dear wife. Thank you. I guess nobody saw me wink. No, sir. All right, now take me upstairs. I, I want to see those kids. They look fine, just fine. Congratulations, young woman. Don't you think you'd better go downstairs now, Commodore? No, no, not yet. Oh, here's Tom. Say, what's your name? Ruth. Uh, Grandpa, I'd, uh, I'd like to talk to you alone. No, no, business talk tonight. I, I'm too tired. Oh. Tom, I can't tell you what this means to me. I've got something to live for now, bringing up those kids and taking care of my wife. We'll make this house a very happy place, uh, Ruth. Uh, Grandpa. What? You haven't been exposed to a lot of sun, have you? Not a bit. Rain most of the time. You uh, weren't hit on the head during the explosion? Not a scratch. Well, Tom, what do you think of your grandma? Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about, sir. No, Tom, I'll tell him. Commodore, we really weren't married on that ship. I know we weren't. Not really. Oh. So we'll get married again. Make it good and legal. Thomas. What is it, Louise? I have something I must tell you. You don't have to tell him tonight, Louise. I most certainly do. Oh, stop beating around the bush. All right, I will. Your wife and your grandson here, why, this very night, out on the terrace... That's I enough, a... Louise. So you like your grandmother, do you, Tom? <laughs> She's right, Grandpa. I love her. We just wanted to... Well, uh... that's as it should be. A grandson ought to love his grandmother. No. <laughs> No, you don't understand, Grandpa. Sure I do, sure. Now come downstairs, all of you. We'll talk about it later, after I announce the wedding. But, Commodore... Not another word. Come on, now. I've got something to tell you, folks. Something you'll want to hear. There's going to be a wedding here in a few days. No, Grandpa, no. Please, Commodore. And I want you all to come to it. This young lady and I were never married at all. But in three days, she's going to be Mrs. Holiday. And it's going to be good and legal and right. Because she's going to marry young Tom. Oh. Grandpa. Don't you think something hit me on the head, Ruth? I think... Uh, wait I think... a minute, wait a minute. It's understood you live in this house and the kids, too. If you'll have us, Grandpa. All right, then. Go on, go on. Kiss him. Oh, Tom. Yes, like you did on the terrace, honey. <laughs> Louise will like that. There, that's just fine. Uh, there's uh, just one more thing. Timothy? Yes, Grandpa? Take off my socks. Our curtain falls on the amazing Mrs. Holliday and rises again on the amazing Miss Jean Tierney, who returns to the footlights with her co-stars, Walter Brennan and Edmund O'Brien. Jean, I've always admired your talent and beauty, and never more than tonight. Thanks, Phil. I enjoyed playing Mrs. Holliday. You know, our audiences are always interested to know how our stars get their start in pictures. Well, why don't you ask our three-time Academy Award winner, Walter Brennan? How about it, Walter? Well, Bill, I started out in Im imitating animals. Imitating animals? You mean in pictures? No, on recording. 
My first assignment beat a, another jackass out of a job, but... <laughs> He wouldn't bray, so I brayed for him at 25 bucks a bray, and was I glad to get that 25 bucks. <laughs> Walter, I don't believe it. Let's hear you. Well, of course, now, that was some time ago, and I'm pretty rusty. Oh, come on, Walter. Let's have it. Well, okay, you asked for it. <laughs> well, Walter, I'm sure that donkey gave our audience quite a kick. Tell us, Ed, how did you get interested in show business? Well, when I was a kid, I lived across the street from Houdini, and he taught all the kids in the neighborhood a lot of magic tricks. And the magic certainly worked. I understand you went from there to playing Shakespeare on Broadway, and then to Hollywood. Good night. Good night. Good night. You Good gave night. us a delightful evening. This is William Keeley saying goodnight to you from Hollywood.